melancholy. I love you, I love you, I love you cause you're mine. I love me little laddie, just like your daddy. I love you, I love you, I love you cause you're mine. It's gonna be an album of kids songs. Um, being pregnant, we thought maybe we should try and put it to use. Um, and kind of, we've got a lot of friends who've got kids and things as well at the moment, and they all seem to complain about the, the quality of kids' albums you get. You know, a lot of them are just rushed out and things. Um, so we thought it'd be quite nice just to look into some traditional old children's songs and, and do them in a Megson style, really. And, um, a lot of the time we do gigs, there's a lot of families will already come along to the gigs and there's a lot of kids who will come up to us and say how much, you know, which songs are really like, so we thought, well, why not explore, explore that a bit. Um, and also, you know, we want to have something that ideally we can, can, can play to this one <laughs> and, uh, and try and maintain some kind of northern accent, uh, otherwise it can be grown up around here and have a Cambridgeshire accent, which is very nice, by the way. songs that you've chosen, ones that you remember from when you were little? Some of them are, aren't they? Yeah, some of them be. But then we want to do some that are a bit more, um, a bit more obscure. Or songs that were, um, maybe not specifically originally for kids, but have got that kind of direct element, you know, something quite, uh, the, the, the nature of the story it's telling, or, or the kind of repetitive chorus, or the way it's structured, something that will kind of appeal. There's lots of songs with animals in and yeah, animals actually. That's right, right. Animals are yeah. in quite a few. But then you kind of you look through these songs and you realise ones you used to sing as a kid weren't really very appropriate <laughs> at all. And so it's like there's a bit to get to and say, should we change these words or should we just leave them the same in a kid's stuff? Not any different. That one you were singing earlier on about even your bra and your boyfriend's car <laughs> that you used to sing when you were. We used to do that clapping game. Yeah. So we're sat in your studio here. You talk us through it a bit. Well, it used to be our garage. Um, until a few months ago and got converted um, and it's gradually filling up with more and more instruments I think it's soon going to outgrow the garage <laughs> Is that a bad thing? <laughs> so is, is this the first time that you've had a home studio when you've been recording an album? Well, we had actually uh, a space in the last place we were at in fact, most of the, the, um, the houses and flats that we've had along the way uh, I've always had some room that we could do something in, but it's nice to have a room that's you know, purely for that rather than having to put down all the guitars and microphones and stuff whenever the in-laws came to stay, you know, so it's its, it's, its own space now we can we can proudly display things on the walls, which is quite nice. Is there anything you have to do in particular to get the room ready for recording? It depends what you want to do in it, and it depends how much you want it to be a a, a, a studio like recording room or a or a like a, a space where you rehearse. We do a bit of rehearsing in it, don't we? And so when you're rehearsing, you don't want it to be too dead. Um, so you want to have a bit of kind of reverberation around the room. But when you're recording, you want it to be. I so mainly you want it to be as kind of dead as possible. So we've created these things that kind of that kind of dead in the sound, and there's some homemade. Uh, Laura Ashley style um, sound absorbers um, to... I got sick of them all just being black so they've been covered in nice fabric. <laughs> yeah, well exactly, I think it's fair, fair enough. Are there any specific instruments that you're using uh, for this new album of children's songs? Well, I guess the banjo's a new one, isn't it? Which will probably... It's kind of rusty old crummy banjo but it made a nice, made a nice sound. Oh, three of the strings make a good sound, one of the strings isn't so good. But I think we can play around that. We only just recently got the piano in the past few months. It's something that we both used to play a lot when we were younger. And I mean, you move out of home, and then you never really have room for a, a piano in your in your flat and house. So this has been the first time we've had space. It's a little bit smaller than most pianos, but that suits us. <laughs> I said the bluebird as he flew. If I were a young man, I would have too. If one got saucy and wanted to go, I'd have a new string to my bow. 
I said the jaybird sitting in a tree When I was a young man I had three Two got saucy and took to flight The one that's left don't treat me right Are you perfectionists when you're recording? Yeah You are more so I am too much so actually, you yeah. know. I need Debs to come and say, you've had to, you know, leave it alone because otherwise you can just go on forever, you know, and I've certainly been guilty in the past of, yeah. kind of overproducing things. I think, you know. But I think it's different in terms of what we're both perfectionists about, whereas I'll probably definitely concentrate on the vocals a lot more. Yeah. And so when it comes to mixing, Stu's often quite happy just to let some bits of vocals go and I'm like, you can't hear that word, you can't hear that. And, so I'm more picky the, about you can't that. Hear the tea on that. Yeah. It doesn't matter if people don't understand the words, <laughs> as long as it sounds the guitar sound alright. <laughs> Froggy wood a wi wingo. Hey o to rosemary. Froggy wood a wi wingo. Whether his mother would let him or no. With a roly poly gammon for tea and a hey ho to rosemary. So off he set with his opera hat, hey ho to Rosemary. So off he set with his opera hat, and on the road he met with a rat, with a roly poly gammon for tea and a hey ho to Rosemary. We've already mentioned that this is your studio in your home. Do you find that you have distractions of everyday life when you're trying to record? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The phone rings. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 good having the, the space because it's you know it's your own. You can do what you wanted to do and it's very relaxed. You haven't got all that pressure. But at the same time, you you, you can easily get distracted or. You can easily get distracted away from everyday life by doing the work. You know, it's, it works both ways. You know, it's hard to turn off sometimes because yeah. you're always thinking about it. It's always there. Even if we close the door in this room, you know, sometimes we do a fair bit of the kind of the admin side of the work that we do. We do it next door, you know. And so it's hard in an evening to to stop doing that sometimes. Do you find yourself in here till four in the morning, or are you quite strict oh, nine no. to five people? Yeah. Yeah. Not 9 to 5, it's 10 till 7, I'd say. Yeah. There's just the stuff that, in it that needs someone who's organised and tends to be very, fairly disorganised. Usually if I've left Stu to book a gig, then there'll be lots of questions. Yeah, there'll be lots of questions. Things will happen, like, we'll get there, there'll be no PA, because he didn't ask. So that's never happened, does it? Yeah, nobody has. With a roly poly gammon for tea and a hey ho to Rosemary. Was the end of one, two, three. Hey, yours and Rosemary. Yes, that was the end of one, two, three. The rat, the mouse, and, and the, the little froggy. <laughs> With a roly poly gammon for tea and a hey ho.